It says this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure that's good, but we're going <laughs> Right. So don't mess up. I, we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, I so much wanted to preach on uh, Ephesians. Uh, to get into that predestination, but I was predestined to preach on the gospel. <laughs> and as the gospel text opens today, uh, Jesus has called the 12 disciples to himself. And he's getting ready to send them out in groups of two. It's a familiar story. It's recorded in, also in Matthew. It's recorded in Luke. Also in Luke, there's a sending out of the 70, which is uh, very similar. I'd like for us to begin this morning with looking at uh, the beginning of what Mark says. Jesus called. Jesus called the 12 to himself. Now, we know that he had already called them to be his disciples. Uh, that happened in chapter 3. We're now in chapter 6. And so we know uh, in chapter 3, Jesus went up on the mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him, and he gave them authority to cast out demons, it said. But these are the 12 he appointed. Simon, who was given the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Also in the group, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. And we should memorize those because I know every one of us know the names of the eight reindeer. We should know the 12. <laughs> right? we, I mean, really, if we're going to go with names, we need to know who these guys are. But, but in our text today, Jesus calls the 12 to himself. And it's for a purpose. It's sort of a preview of coming attractions in a miniature form. Uh, historically, in the moment, Jesus did call the disciples over to him in a sense of, uh, hey, you know, hey, over here, over here kind of thing. But he also, you know, if you're looking at the big picture, this is sort of a, a, a microcosm of the big picture. Jesus called these 12. He called these 12 in the greater sense of the word call. Now, in the same sense, you, know, you think of the people of old, the Old Testament, all of the stories of calls that are there. There are a lot of them. It's called in the same sense that Moses was called, the same sense that Jonah was called, Jeremiah. And it's interesting to note that throughout biblical history, when God calls people, to himself, he calls them in order to send them. Send them to do something, something on behalf, on his behalf, something for the advancement of the kingdom. Uh, now, we remember Moses was called to go to Pharaoh and speak on God's behalf and to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Jonah was called to carry God's message, and he went to Nineveh and proclaimed repentance. Jeremiah went to speak words of judgment to Jerusalem, telling them that Babylon would come and destroy it. That's, I always thought it was interesting to note that uh, the three, those three, they do have something in common and that each one of them balked at the idea. And they weren't in favor of it at first. You know? uh, you want, you want to think that everybody's like Isaiah, you know, here am I, send me. Yeah, pick me, pick me. <laughs> but they're not. You know, Moses was more like, here am I, send Aaron. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't speak well. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, some people have a way with words and some people have not way. <laughs> Uh, and Moses claimed he had not way. But God said, don't worry, I'm going with you. 
And so he answers the call. We know Jonah's story. He didn't want to go, not because of his own limitations, but he hated the Ninevites. God sending him to Nineveh to preach repentance to the people he hates. He doesn't want to go. He, and we find out later it's because he was afraid they would repent and that God would save them. <laughs> he wanted God to destroy Nineveh. And Jeremiah, of course, was faithful to his call. And everything that he said came to pass. But we've all been called just as surely as they were. But you know, that's, we weren't called. Uh, it, the call that we like is this one, the one from Matthew 11. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly of heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's inviting. We want to do that one. I want to, I want to go rest with Jesus. And the problem is a lot of a lot of people get stuck there. It's just the relationship between them, Jesus, sit around. Uh, you know, that's why people, I think sometimes they're interested in spirituality, not because. They want to grow in ministry. It's because they like that relationship with Jesus. For just me and Jesus. And that's not what it's about. But we want to make it about us. And we want to make it you know, easy. We want to. But God calls us to do specific things. And to advance his kingdom. God calls us into his story. Not into our story. Now, did God need Moses in order to free the Israelites from captivity? No, he could have done it another way. But God had a plan, and the plan was Moses. And he called Moses and sent him. God didn't need Jonah to call the Ninevites to repentance. But God had a plan for Nineveh, and that plan was Jonah. God didn't need Jeremiah or any of the prophets to speak on his behalf. He could have found another way to do it. He didn't have to call Jeremiah. He could have picked anyone. There were a lot of prophets available. But God had a plan. And that plan was Jeremiah. And so in the same way, Jesus calls the disciples to himself that day. And he sent them out. The word that Mark uses here is the word that's not found in his gospel frequently. Apostolane. It's the verb form of apostle. He doesn't call them apostles except in one place. He's always calling them disciples. They're students. They're horrible students. <laughs> uh, and they're horrible disciples. Uh, but when they Mark calls them apostles when they come back from this journey. That's the only place that Mark uses that word. He said, when the apostles return in verse 30, then it switches back to disciples. They go back to school. And, and really, in the gospel of Mark, one of the things that runs through that entire gospel is how stupid and clueless the disciples are. And they are. Jesus has to explain everything to them. They all, he's always chastising them for their lack of faith. They're clueless. They just don't get it. They don't understand. These 12 people have nothing in and of themselves that you would want to pick them. But that's part of God's plan. I've always been amazed at the not just at this story, but look at the whole of scripture, the kinds of people that God calls. And somebody said, well, they're ordinary people. And I say, no, they're not. They're less than ordinary. <laughs> they're extraordinarily bad people. He calls swindlers and adulterers and murderers and tax collectors, prostitutes, fishermen. That's not so bad. <laughs> Unscrupulous folk of all kinds. 
including me. None of these 12 men are anyone that you or I would have selected to be on our team. And we certainly would never have picked any of them to be our spokesperson. That's not the image you want out there. But what's more amazing than who God calls is what God does with them. If they say yes, when they answer the call, these less than ordinary people, these flat out flawed and broken people are used by God to do some amazing things. He established nations. The message carried out to the world and it revolutionized and altered entire societies. It's changed the world. And people of all races are now part of this kingdom. He uses these flawed people to advance his kingdom. But he doesn't just simply call these people and send them out. He calls them and then he gives them authority. He gives them a message. He empowers them to deliver that message, sends them out with his power and his authority. And it has been, think about this for just a minute. I, before I put this down, I, I sat and thought about it, prayed about it for a long time. It's been the most successful marketing campaign in the history of the world, bar none. I mean, not even Geico. <laughs> <laughs> or Coke or, or anybody. No one has had a marketing campaign like this one that has changed the world and is still changing the world. Because God calls, God sends, but he also equips and empowers. And I find it amazing that everything that God called these people to do was successful. But not because of them. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he played an important part as the lawgiver. People call, call it the law of Moses. His faithfulness to the call that God gave to him built a people. Jonah carried the message of repentance to the people of Nineveh, and they repented. Granted, Jonah wasn't happy about that. He wasn't very happy at all at first. He wanted to just sit down and die. Jeremiah did. What God had called him to do. And all of his wasn't doom and gloom and lamentation about what was coming upon them, that they would be carried off into to exile and Jerusalem would be destroyed. In Jeremiah 31, verse 17, he said, speaking for God, there is hope for your future, declares the Lord. And your children shall come back to their own country. Now, as with all of these prophets of old, who were part of God's plan, God had a plan in sending the model apostle for everybody. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God, was sent by the father with the message of salvation. In John 12, 49, he said, for I did not speak on my own, but the father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. And he was faithful to his mission and his mission was absolutely wildly successful. That's the model we have. 
who does God call us to be? I always like it when Bishop Jones asks that question. Who did God call us to be? <coughs> Jesus. And as with the call of old from all, for all the prophets and his own call from his father, Jesus called to him Simon Peter, James, and John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Altheus, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. He called them and he sent them out with his authority and his power. And he sent them to preach and cast out demons and anoint the sick. And we find out later when they come back, it was wildly successful. Actually, when they come back in Mark's gospel, we're just told they come back. In Matthew and Luke, we find out it was wildly successful. They were do, able to do all kinds of things in Jesus' name. Even the demons submitted to them. Not because of who they were or anything uh, within themselves other than the power and authority of Jesus. God had a plan. And it included the 12. And we know that Jesus would send them out again in much the same way after the resurrection. What we call the Great Commission. Go ye therefore unto all nations, baptizing, making disciples. But I'm going to read to you the shortest of the versions of the Great Commission. This is from the Gospel of John. I'm not reading it because it's short. Uh, I'm reading it because it mentions Jesus as the model. In the upper room, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me. Even so, I am sending you. Jesus called his disciples and he sent them out to establish his church. And they have been wildly successful. But the story is not finished. This is where we're invited into the story. Each one of us have been called in every sense of the use of that word. We have been called by Jesus Christ. He has called us to himself for the purpose of advancing his kingdom. And just as he does with the prophets, he calls us and he sends us out to be apostles in the world. It's the same message. It's the same authority. It's the same power that accompanies us on our missionary journey. Right now, as we're coming out of this pandemic, most of us are not really sure what we're supposed to be doing. Of course, that's true for me when there's not a pandemic. But we're not really sure how we're supposed to be ministering. We know it's different. We know the world's different. We know everything's been changed but we're not exactly sure. So I've been called, but how do I fulfill that calling? I don't know. I don't have the answer for us. I don't have the answer for me. I don't have the answer for you or for us as a congregation. I, I don't know. But we need to discern that. We need to listen. I need to listen. You need to listen. So that we will know what God's plan is. Because God does have a plan. God has a plan. And that plan is you. And that plan is me. And that plan is this congregation. So we need to be about praying for discernment. So I invite you to do that. I 
invite me to do that? That was a strange sentence. We need to discern what God would have us do. Because God has called us and God is sending us out. Amen.